welcome back to D&D Beyond. My name is Amy Dallin, and I am joined once again by our own Michael Galvis. Hey, I'm so glad to be back. And I have brought him in specifically because we've been talking about all of the cool stuff that we get to play with now that we finally have Morden Kane Presents Monsters of the Multiverse available for our character building fun and monster facing fun. Uh, but it includes 30 different options uh, in one place uh, for building playable characters with tweaks of races, updates of races, new options. Um, and we think they're cool and exciting. And we were talking about some of the nice, inspiring ideas that we got looking through those. And specifically, one of them, Michael, was that you had an idea for a very cool blade singer wizard. So one of the long, long, like one of the longing having existed, my words are great today. One of the uh, older <laughs> subclasses that we have available to us is the Bladesinger Wizard introduced in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide and updated in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, and browsing among all these uh, playable race options, Michael, you picked out one that would be a good match for the Bladesinger Wizard. So today we are going to build at level five. Uh, and I'm going to ask you for your recommendations on what might make for a really fun combination there and talk a little bit about uh, what makes the Blade Singer special. For those who are catching up with us, it is also Pride Month. So make sure if you're watching this before the end of this month, you can claim uh, the Dice of True Color, which are very gorgeous. And that link is running through the chat and in the description. And we have lots of exciting stuff coming up. So stay tuned. But Michael, to business. What is a blade singer wizard and why are they fun? So blade singing wizards uh, give you the best of both worlds. You level as a wizard and you're learning, you're pulling spells from the wizard spell list, but you're also getting subclass features that make it possible for you to get with a melee range and to be attacking with a one handed weapon. So you get to have that sort of mix of like, I'm going to stay in the back lines this battle. And then in the next combat, I'm going to be in the front lines uh, swinging my short sword or whatever your weapon of choice is. So uh, obviously there's some appeal there for folks who want to mix it up, do different kinds of things, who love being an arcane uh, wielder, um, but would occasionally like to maybe do a little swashbuckle here and there. And... Uh, if folks have not played a Blade Singer, I recommend we have a Blade Singer 101 article that is available on the website from last summer by Jeremy Bloom. Uh, and uh, Jeremy Bloom, and it goes through some of these basics, training and war and song, the basic features that you get as you level up. But to business, Michael, amongst the options in Morden Kane Presents Monsters and Multiverse, there was one that stood out to you. What is it that you think we should roll up today for our specific Blade Singer? Uh, the, the first race, when I was going through Monsters of the Multiverse, through the different races, because I love all of the player options in that book, the race that stood out to me first was the Earth Gnasi. Uh, this is a, a race that gets some really cool key benefits that I think complements what you want to be doing with the blade singer the blade singing subclass uh so if you wanted to go through it um, i can kind of like walk us through uh each of the the different things first off hey you could be medium or small this is kind of a new change that we're seeing uh post tasha's is that you're going to have a little more flexibility choosing between a medium or a small creature if you're like me and you like little itty bitty versions of characters uh that's that's going to be a great option your speed is 30 feet, pretty standard. You get dark vision, which is really handy. Um, I have a blade singing wizard in a, in a current campaign that does not have dark vision. And so I had to take the dark vision spell and it pains me every time to have to prepare that out of fear that my DM is going to try and throw me into a cave. Now getting into the more interesting stuff, you get earth walk. So you can move across difficult terrain without expending extra movement. If you're using your walking speed on the ground or the floor, this may not come up super often. It really depends on your DM, but when in, when you are in a combat where you're dealing with difficult terrain, this, this racial trait is really going to save your butt, especially if you're a blade singing wizard and you're wanting to get in and out of, uh, of melee range of enemies. Uh, safely. 
And then my favorite one, Merge with Stone. So this is really cool. You learn the Blade Ward cantrip. Normally that is cast as an action. That particular cantrip, it gives you resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. However, this particular race, you can cast that cantrip as a bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and that refreshes on a long rest. This is really handy um, because for a Blade Singing Wizard, if you're going to end your turn surrounded by enemies or you know in front of the boss, you're going to want some defenses. Normally that comes in the shape of maybe the shield spell or maybe silvery barbs. Uh, Blade, can Blade Ward is kind of an extra layer of protection so that if you use your reaction for shield or something and it fails, you know, the, the enemy is able to hit you, Blade Ward is going to make sure that, you know, chances are you're going to be taking half damage. Absolutely. On top so of that, the Earth has, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, we, we'll, we'll, we'll continue with that uh, and we will, we will return uh, to. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, so I don't play a lot of druids. Um, I know that some people will be like, druids are amazing, and they are amazing. Uh, they're just not my flavor. Now, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to envy them, because the Earth Ganassi, you get Pass Without Trace at 5th level. You get one free casting of it per long rest, and then you can use your spell slots to cast it uh, on additional uh, additional times. And you can pick intelligence or wisdom or charisma as your spell casting ability for that particular the the two spells. So you can see the way that they've brought the Earth Genasi in line with some of the newer races like Fairy and Herringon in terms of uh of course some of these changes like flexible ability score increases, like choosing your size, and uh an increase uh, that we've seen a lot of things that scale with your proficiency bonus in general, um, which make for really interesting, unique, but still scalable abilities. Um, if you're curious about changes over time, uh, you of course will remember that we've all been rocking some Genasi of various types for a while now because they're introducing the Elemental Evil uh, supplement. And they were about like this um, for folks. This is what legacy marked content now in the system to sort of help figure out what we're looking at. Um, and you can see that we've kept uh, the names for Earthwalk and Merge with Stone, but they've gotten a little bit of a tweak. So Earthwalk uh, is just a similar goal that functions a little bit differently. And Merge with Stone has moved that Pass Without Trace up and added the Blade Ward, which is the inspiration for uh, the combo that we're going to make. And I love this, Michael, from a flavor perspective. Uh, like, I'm a, I'm a bouldery blade singer. Um, I'm going to repel some blades. I'm, I'm not the toughest in the world, maybe. Uh, you know, I'm still a wizard. I'm, I'm like a little squishy. Maybe I'm clay. I don't know. Somewhere, where are we? <laughs> somewhere in the rock scale. Um, oh, but... I have an idea. You gave me oh. an idea just now. But well, I'll, I'll save it. <laughs> okay. And with that, let's get into the actual building. So to start with, awesome. we're Earth Genasi. Yeah? Yes. Um, what size are we picking, Michael? Small. We're going to be a wee little Earth Genasi. Oh, I'm so excited. And I have a, okay, I have excellent. a lore reason for this. So this is you, this is when you started naming like clay and other things, I immediately thought, what if we were uh, like a diamond? And so maybe we were born within the earth and you know, how diamonds and other things, they are um, created over millions of years and, and they are deeply compressed. So that's why we are size small is because we were born within the earth and we have been hardened by all of the force of the earth just like pushing up against us. Shaped by those pressures. Oh, yes. I, I love it. Um, and we are going to want to choose intelligence for our merge with stone, right? Correct. Right. Just double check. All right. And get out of here, fighter. You were my... <laughs> Random sample. Usually when I do randoms, they're air croak artificers because it's the first alphabetical. I might go back to that. It just made me laugh today. Um, <laughs> I will say the, the Genasi works pretty nicely with, um, with the fighter too, because I, I don't think they have a whole ton of uses for their bonus action. So they could be using Blade Ward pretty regularly. 
I mean, who couldn't use a little bit of resistance to slashing and bludgeoning? Yeah, seriously. Uh, you know, it's, what I do like is that there's no correct answer for combining races and classes, but you get fun possibilities when you do it. So this is what made this so fun and attractive for me as a choice. First level, Urchinasi, wizard, what are we doing? Um, uh, proficiencies, I just feel like it only makes sense that maybe he Arcana. And if we were born, I just have I have it in my mind that I am just an Earth Genasi who it, it took my gestation period took a million years, and then I it took me a long time to dig myself up out of the dirt onto the surface. So then maybe I have spent a long time like making up my own history. So like proficiency in history. <laughs> maybe I was I born with it. books. <laughs> I was born in an underground cave and there's just tons of books. <laughs> I love that. I love the idea that when we eventually emerged as a life form, it was in something that we would now consider uh, an underground ruin. So a dungeon type environment was where we came from. And it included like, you know, walls of hieroglyphics or ancient tomes or paintings or something that we sort of absorbed. So we've got like a weird specialty in the most ancient history. Um, but uh, I, I, like it. I actually, I actually came up, I have a new idea. So we we were born underground. Sapphire dragons tend to have uh, they make their layers in the in the underdark. So then let's say the and because we are diamond, maybe the sapphire dragon claim saw this like diamond sort of egg where we were inside of, realized that there was something living inside, and then has just been reading bedtime stories of like lore and things to it. <laughs> Um, yes, it's all, all canon, all canon. Maybe we had an Emerald Dragon friend who taught us war, war stories. Um, and don't know if they hang out. Maybe they do. Um, <laughs> so what else? We got our spellcasting at our first level in our arcane recovery, but we don't narrow down yet. Michael, let's fill out that first level. We need some, some starting spells options here. Yes. So at first level, we're not going to yet have our subclass features. So we'll want to do a little forward planning for when we do have the subclass features, but also keep in mind that first level, we're pretty much going to be playing like your standard wizard. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of hit points, so maybe that's a good approach. I, I feel like every spellcaster that I take, every wizard I make, I detect magic is just a go-to. Anytime sure. there's going to be some magical effect, I feel like my my friends and party members all just like turn to me like, all right, wizard, <laughs> is there magic here? It's like, okay, I, I, I got you covered with detect magic. Um, the second spell that I'm thinking is disguise self. So obviously as a blade singer, you know, we're thinking a lot about how we're going to be useful in combat. How are we going to survive combat and be dealing damage? But we also want to take into consideration what we're going to be doing outside of combat. And that's where the flexibility of the wizard really comes in. You have a lot of opportunity there to kind of shape yourself in and out of combat uh, according to what you feel um, is most fun for you within the game. And for me, disguise self is a lot of fun. It's, uh, it allows you to do a lot of sleuthing without being detected. It allows you to have all sorts of antics. So that's my second thing. Um, I realized, Michael, I think we should divert and give ourselves some ability scores. Um, oh, yes. Because that might influence <laughs> that me picking some spells here. Um, so we're going to take a, a quick detour. And, and sure. I know that we could talk endlessly about this. But in brief, just run down what I should pop in for my scores here. Uh, and uh, one note on why. Yes. So, um, okay. So if we're, st we're sticking to the theme of like, we were born from underground. I want to keep strength at 10. Normally I feel like wizards will have eight strength, but this guy, he, he's pretty tough. He had to crack out of a diamond egg. So I would keep that at 10, uh, dexterity. So I already have in mind for fourth level, we're going to take a feat and I have an idea for feet. It already gives us plus one dexterity. So I want to put dexterity to maybe um, 15. That would make it our highest at the moment. That's Oh, uh, oh, I do point by, by the way. My bad. We should have switch discussed to point by. it. Um, excellent. Okay. <laughs> Strength to 10. Dex to 15? Yes. I'm making you reverse um, engineer uh, everything. Hmm? <laughs> 
Um, let's see, what else? I would have up to 15? So we have 15 dexterity. Constitution, I would put at 13. Because I'm thinking of putting the plus one in there for our race. Okay. Um, intelligence 14. And we're gonna use the plus two on that. Yes, we're gonna put use the plus two on that. Uh, wisdom at 12 and um wizards already get proficiency in wisdom so you may feel as though you know you don't need to have higher wisdom uh they get proficiency in wisdom saving throws i'm putting it there for i just think it matches my this particular character and then charisma i put it eight if you're raised by a dragon uh you're probably going to be have like a sort of haughty sort of attitude or maybe you just weren't socialized and so you're kind of maybe a little bit awkward so for the I... the racial uh increases then i'd pick the plus two plus one and i would put the plus two in intelligence and then the plus one in constitution now that does All leave right. us with 15 in dexterity and as a blade singing wizard we do want higher dexterity to bump up our ic and to be able to hit more reliably within melee range. Uh, but because I'm planning on a feat at fourth level, we're just gonna survive these first few levels with uh, 15 dexterity. But there's definitely a way you can configure this so that you'll have like 18 dex at level four. Uh, but I think you have to like maybe sacrifice a little bit of your, your other ability scores to make that work. All right. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, now that we have a few more options, prepared spells isn't uh, one anymore. Um, and if you want to rapid fire, what else goes on our first level list? Okay, so first level list, uh, we got to tech magic, disguise self, find familiar, very iconic wizard spell, opens up a lot of opportunities for you to kind of like sneak around and stuff uh, to get intel. Magic Missile is one of my favorite first level spells. For the longest time, I was sleeping on it because I was like, 1d4 plus 1. And then I tried it out, and I was one-shotting a lot of creatures at first level, and it love it. Uh, I picked Silvery Barbs for uh, let's do Silvery Barbs fifth one. The reason for that is it only requires vocal components. So if you're dual wielding, you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, I dropped my weapon so I can cast this spell. So it's it's handy. Um, it also can give you advantage, or you can be supporting your allies. You can also use it out of combat, uh, just for antics. Like someone's doing a performance, you're like, "I hate that guy." Then you can get you know silver barbs in. Um, and then for the last one is sleep, because sometimes you don't want to kill your enemies. Sometimes you want to take a hostage, or you just want to get past uh, your your typical guard without having to draw blood. And what are we going for cantrips? Cantrips, yes. So I love uh, Booming Blade. Um, and Booming Blade green. is one that you'll notice is recommended in the 101 for Blade Singers, talking about how uh, things go well together. Um, the, the one sense version of this is this is designed to help you be a melee slash spellcasting type. Michael, any uh, quick thoughts on why this one? On Booming Blade, so Booming Blade in this particular build, so <laughs> it, it requires a little bit of discussion about Shadow Blade, which is a second level spell. So there was an errata that now requires Booming Blade, um, that requires sh Booming Blade for you to be wielding a weapon that's worth at least one silver piece. Um, I believe that's correct. Yeah, it's right there. Um, which means if you're casting Shadow Blade, that does not qualify for Booming Blade. So we're going to be using Booming Blade. We're not going to be using Shadow Blade. Both are equally good. If you want to do your Shadow Blade build, that's totally fine. But I don't recommend taking Booming Blade unless you're comfortable with having a cantrip that you're only going to use sometimes or a second level spell that you're only going to, be able to use sometimes. Um, as you level up too, Booming Blade will add additional damage to your attacks. And most importantly, Booming Blade by default will punish enemies that you hit if they end up moving on their turn which will be important once we kind of get into some of the other spells that I, I have in mind. Excellent. For the second cantrip, uh, huh? yeah, uh, Green Flame, I think Green Flame Blade is, is good. Um, not okay. a favorite of mine, but uh, 
with what I have in mind, we're not going to have a whole ton of AOE, so this can be a way for you to just kind of spread around the damage. And, and then the third effect, one. So if we're solo focused, you want some options for variety. Exactly. Um, and then the third one is pure flavor. Um, oh gosh, I think it's called mold stone, melt stone, stone melt. <laughs> I have to look it up. I think it's meld, maybe. Let's see. Mold Earth Cantrip chooses a portion of dirt of stone you can see in a cube, and you can manipulate it in a few excellent ways. I love every variety of, here is how I do my, like, from druid craft to, like, taking crested digitation to every little, here's my little weird small thing that I can always do as a flavor of my magic. Uh, I'm a fan of all of those, and this is a great choice for our Earth Genasi wizard. Um, alternatively, if we wanted to have a ranged spell, I would swap out Green Flame Blade for, for what's it called? Frostbite? I think it's called. Um, basically, this particular spell, yes, it's Frostbite. This spell requires a constitution saving throw, and if they fail, uh, the, the target has disadvantage on their next weapon attack roll before the end of its turn. So it can just be handy if... You want to fire off a range spell, then get move into melee range so that you can attack next round, but you also worry about taking damage. So that's just an option. Um, it could be really handy at first level, um, especially since you are going to be say, playing a traditional wizard and you'll be like I, standing in the back most of the time. I love that. And these two options might also be great to think about in terms of who else you're bringing to the party. If you have a whole bunch of other people who might benefit from being up close and you're going to stay far away, then you definitely like if you're going to sometimes go up and sometimes go back uh, versus definitely always be in the mix based on who else is around you and who can benefit from it. That's a great way to help fill these last slots. What background do we have in mind? Um, Hermit definitely comes to mind. Love it. Great yeah, fit for what we're doing. Lived in seclusion. You can pick up an extra language proficiency. Um, you get medicine, religion proficiency. You kind of just, I think it's, I, I think. Probably. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So for that one, I would pick uh, Undercommon. So you have Undercommon and Draconic. I think that makes the most sense for our character. All right. Um, I'm going to throw on some starting equipment. Michael, quarterstaff, dagger. Oh, uh, I picked pick uh, dagger, dagger, arcane focus, because you can get a crystal as an arcane focus, which is super cute. Um, Scholars or explorers pack, it, kind of up to you. You know, has your character been really traveling for a while? Or they, yeah. Uh, and then uh, just hit as starting equipment. And then from there, you can kind of like equip your stuff and um, you'll want to like first session buy like a short sword or rapier or something with the finesse weapon property, since we're going to be using our, our dex modifier to be attacking. But uh, uh, you, you, I think we have like five starting gold, so hopefully it shouldn't be an issue. If not, you're going to be swinging with a dagger to your DMs like, OK, fine, you can have you can have a, a regular weapon. <laughs> all right uh it costs 25 gold pieces but we're just gonna say we worked it out um yeah we worked it out <laughs> we we begged our dm we sold everything that we have so that we can get a regular one-handed weapon second level that's when we were gonna get the blazing subclass that's where we get the blade song class feature that's gonna give us uh tons of tons of benefits to um or viability in, in, in combat. You can, oh yeah, okay, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, get a bonus JC equal to your intelligence modifier, your walking speed increases by 10, you have advantage on acrobatics checks, you gain a bonus to con saves to maintain concentration. Um, you also get the training in war and song subclass feature, which is gonna give you uh, proficiency in uh, a one-handed weapon of your choice. So we picked, we purchased a rapier, so I hope we pick proficiency in rapiers. <laughs> it's possible it, in game, maybe hold off on buying the rapier till you get to this point. We might have done that slightly backwards. Um, we're gonna get You'll proficiency also notice, in performance, which is fun. Yes, and you also get proficiency in light armor. So you'll notice that I didn't take, uh, I didn't suggest mage armor. Definitely, if you like mage armor, it's it's totally worth it. I 
I did not, uh, I don't normally pick it just for this subclass because you get line armor, so you can get, I believe it's studded leather, which is 12 plus your dex modifier AC. So you're only missing out on one AC by not taking mage armor, but that it does cost 45 gold. So talk to your DM like I talked to my DM. So what we know is that uh, we have a strong motivation for our little adventuring uh, rock friend, which is that they need some money for some armor. Um, <laughs> and that, you know, that's a, as good a starting point as any. Okay. So at second level, alarm and comprehend languages, there are tons of really good first level spells, you know, like absorb elements, charm person, false life, shield, thunder wave, mage armor. Um, I went for alarm and comprehend languages because I like to be good out of combat as well as in combat. And one of the great benefits of being a wizard is that um, you don't have to prepare your ritual spells, uh, spells like alarm. As long as it's in your spell book, you can cast it as a ritual. So it makes you really, you get to be kind of like a, a Swiss army knife when it comes to, with, with this, uh, this particular class. Let's hop on to level three. This is when you get your second level spells and things start to get really, really exciting. And I think in my mind, third and fourth level is when you're really coming online with this particular build that is just bubbling in my brain. So first, second level spell is going to be Kinetic Jaunt. Kinetic Jaunt is a concentration spell. It uh, is a bonus action to, to turn on, to turn on, to cast. <laughs> Uh, but it only requires somatic, uh, it requires somatic components, so you can't have uh, another weapon in your hand. Um, so you'll want to cast this before you draw your, if you're dual wielding, you'll want to cast this before you draw the second weapon. Um, once you cast this spell, your walking speed increases by 10. You don't provoke opportunity attacks. Amazing. And you can move through the space of another creature, and it doesn't count as difficult terrain. So... Why? Why Why this spell? So what I have in mind for this particular character is that they're going to use their incredible speed to be running in and out of combat. So they're going to rush in, attack, and then move back. With that attack, when they attack, they're going to be using Booming Blade. Now, remember, Booming Blade as a cantrip, if your target is hit and then they move, they take damage uh, for moving. So it punishes your enemies for going after you. Now, you already get an extra, some extra movement speed from your blade singing uh, subclass uh, when you have your blade song going. And then Kinetic Jaunt is going to add another 10 feet to your movement speed. So right there, you're going to have 50 movement speed. You're kind of going to be like a pseudo monk here. So this gives you a lot of opportunity to be in the back lines if you need to, cast your spells, do whatever you want. And then once you're ready to go in, into, uh, go in and start swinging, you can safely do that, move back out, and if um, and you can position yourself in a way that if the enemy that you that you're targeting decides to chase after you, they'll either have to spend all of their movement doing it, they may not be able to get to you, or most importantly, they're going to be triggering opportunity attacks from uh, your fellow party members. Um, so this is like a nice way to. I what did I I in my brain. Um, I nicknamed this build uh, Sting Like a Bee, Run Like a Fiend. Just like a fun little, just a fun little idea to just kind of like sting annoy like your Sting then turn into flea. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I love that. <laughs> uh, I love it. That's, I'm, I'm already very excited about the, this idea. Uh, and so to, we picked up Kinetic Jaunt. Um, uh, so the second that? one. First, yes. Yeah, that was our first second. Uh, the second one, uh, Rhymes Binding Ice. I believe this is from Fizzbands. So this is uh, this is going to be like a, a short range AOE spell that you have. And it plays nicely with Kinetic Jaunt because it's not a concentration spell. You can cast Kinetic, Kinetic Jaunt and if there's a big group of enemies, you run up to them, you cast Rhyming Bind Rhymes Binding Ice, deal a bunch of damage. If they fail their save, um, their movement speed turns to zero. And they're trapped in ice until uh, I believe they use an action to break free. So you run in, cast the spell, run back out, and then your enemies are like stuck there and they can't move. And you can just keep like firing off from range if you want to. Um, it also makes it useful for the fighter, the paladin in your group to make sure that they're able to get up to these enemies and start um, really going to town on them. 
just really start beating them up. Now, there are that. other really awesome second level spells here. Flaming Sphere, Hold Person, Misty Step, Phantasmal Force. But again, um, <laughs> this is the power of the, of the class. It's, you're just going to have so many really good options. At fourth <laughs> level... Um, so the, for the feet, I picked Slasher. This is going to give us plus one dexterity. We're going to bump our dexterity from 15 to 16. And then uh, why I picked this feat is because when you hit with slashing damage, you reduce your target's speed by 10. So it makes it even harder for enemies that you hit to be chasing after you. You're going to have your booming blade. You're going to have your kinetic jaunt going. You're going to be reducing their speed. You're going to have an extra, extra movement speed from other features. It's awesome. Uh, and then when you score crit, the target has disadvantage on all, all attack rolls. Um, for a limited time, which helps protect us. Spell-wise, uh, Enhance Ability, really amazing for out of combat. Utility, one of my favorite spells. And then False Life, I'm not 100% on this one, uh, but it does give us, it gives us a buffer of hit points because we don't have, this particular build doesn't have Absorb Elements, so we are gonna be extra weak to those sort of like AOE spells. So False Life acts as a nice little buffer to keep us alive. Um, mm -hmm. There's a oh, there's so many good spells. Um, Vortex Warp and Web, and uh, those two are like my MVPs. So I do want to touch on other feats uh, that I were in consideration. Warcaster, iconic for this particular build uh, because it lets you ignore somatic components, gives you advantage on con saves to maintain concentration, and you can cast spells when an enemy triggers opportunity attacks. Fey Touched for Hex or Hunter's Mark is always nice. Uh, Meta Magic Adept, very cool. If you want to do, if you want to pick up Quickened, you can do like a Quickened Fireball and then use your action for other stuff. Um, I would say those three. Once we hit fifth oh. level, we get third level spells. That's oh boy, there's so many good options. Um, I picked Fireball and Haste. Fireball, because uh, by this point, we don't have a, a ton of really good AoE, and you know we want to give ourselves options, so Iconic Wizard spell. And then I also picked Haste. Um, it's a little redundant with Kinetic Jaunt, uh, with what it does. Haste is like a better Kinetic Jaunt, but um, I feel like if we're going to be a Blade Singer, we're going to want to be focusing on melee attacks, or at least in this particular case. But other options you could have counterspell fly hypnotic pattern lightning bolt uh tiny hut if you just want something cute <laughs> i do love uh, so it gains an additional it lets us gain an additional action on each of our turns which will let us add extra melee attacks which for folks who uh might not have noticed this in the the blade singer traits once we hit six we're gonna get a sort of extra attack style ability and we can use one on a cantrip so if you're sacrificing a weapon attack on a cantrip then you can haste eventually um and get that back uh and we have the ingredients we will fill out uh all of the choices um in the link that you can see in the description to make sure our earth genasi wizard has packed everything in the spell book that they think they need but michael is there a major feature that we haven't done yet or is it time to name our wizard um i think i'm good i i feel like i've been talking at a mile million miles an hour so i'm i'm happy to to put the ribbon on this little fella i cast haste on you specifically for this stream because i wanted you to walk <laughs> me through a complete wizard build uh in a few minutes <laughs> because i like challenges um but we need a name for our wizard and chat has been very much on it with this i believe they started with uh herb as a reference to a, a book series that one of our mods particularly enjoys um we got uh genasi named pebbles we got uh <laughs> let's see rocky obviously a classic um barrel flint barrel being a kind of mineral uh now our particular little fella person yep but uh sir a fella going low fella What's our like? What did you have in mind for our little fella, our diamond uh, hermit, um, raised by a dragon underground in the underdark? Um, I would imagine that in this particular adventure, he has ended up in a city, and it's his first time having to interact with 
uh, or it's his first time being crowded by people. So he might be a little short tempered um, as some dragons may be. So he likes to kick people in the shins uh, because they don't notice him because he's so small. And um, he's not great. He's just not great with people. Um, he's all he's all fight and 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 not so much uh, diplom diplomacy. OK, I love that. So that suggests uh, not not cuddly like the, the you know, not not soft and huggable clay, but more spiky, more glint edged, uh, more uh, sharp. Um, so what if their name is, uh, Sharp, uh, I feel like he should have some, some wild last name. Like maybe the dragon gave them a last name. So it should just be like a Gutherumbundle, you know, like dragon names it. are so wild. <laughs> You could just literally just hammer away at your keyboard and that will be a dragon name. <laughs> Sharp Agwarth Rondel. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Uh, we will add a little portrait uh, for this, but tiny. Um, you can obviously <laughs> pick any variety here. And then we would normally give ourselves some lovely decorations. I'm going to say basic wizard's pretty good here. If we did land in a city, um, it might be kind of funny to go fishbowl here. Um, but Sharp Aguarfondle, the Earth Genasi wizard raised by dragons, uh, is pretty much ready to go on some adventures. Michael, uh, any final thoughts on what would make Sharp fun in battle or which of these things will want to most lean on as a strategy? Um, with the, this particular set of selected spells, it's definitely like spend your first round prepping and then uh, maybe slinging a spell, or maybe slinging a cantrip from the back lines while you get like your blade song and your kin kinetic jaunt up and then go in and start um, doing the strategy of run in attack run back out and, and that sort of thing and really communicate with your party as well that when you're moving out of melee range you're trying to position yourself in a way that if the enemy comes after you they're going to be punished by the other melee type characters within the party also make use of cover this is a great build if you're um ending up like in a tavern brawl or something you can move without triggering opportunity attacks and then get behind the bar or something to help you uh, succeed on those saves against like AOE spells and the like, which uh, tends to be uh, a weakness for this particular subclass. Fantastic. So if you enjoyed this, let us know what combinations or what uh, recommendations you might want to see next as we get to sort of sample from the delicious platter that is Morden Kane Presents Monsters and Multiverse. Uh, we each have a bunch of faves. I'm particularly interested in the new Eladrin, I think are very, very cool. Um, I, we have talked about a couple of other things that struck our fancy, but it's fun to come up with new combinations that we haven't gotten to play before or that might give rise to new possibilities like the Blade Ward built in to the Earth Genasi that we used to bring this blade singing wizard to life. Thank you for watching. The links to the sheet are running down below. Make sure you take that D&D &D play activity survey this week if you see that popping up online or in the link below so you can help shape the future of Dungeons and Dragons, which is a thing we get to just post now that we're part of the family, which we're not over geeking out about and we won't be for some time. Make sure you're claiming those dice of true color during Pride Month because they are gorgeous. Uh, and we are going to stay tuned for a couple of questions, but if you're just watching this, we will see you next time on D&D Beyond.